Hey everybody, it's Naima, and I'm here with our second edition of the new blog, Worship Notes. I had this dream, and um, the funny thing is, I had it twice. I had it twice in like a two hour span, which is really unusual for me. I have dreams all the time, and then I don't remember them until like I'm actually living in the dream, like the thing is actually happening. Um, but this morning, and by the time you see this, a week probably will have passed, I had a dream that I missed a cruise ship. Um, <laughs> and then my husband woke me up, he was leaving for work, and I fell back asleep and I dreamt it again. I missed this cruise ship, except I missed it a different way than I missed it the first time. And both times that I missed this cruise ship, um, I was with the same people. It was real interesting. It wasn't with my husband, but it was with some other people in my family. Um, and so I, I, I started to pray about it and ask the Lord for some revelation. I looked up some biblical dream interpretation and it talked about being on the water and dealing with your emotions and a symbol of your life. And, um, <laughs> and I kept thinking, well, I missed the boat. You know, a cruise ship is like a symbol of your life. What's going on? And I'm like, well, but I missed the boat. And after asking the Lord to give me some clarity, what I came to discover was um, that the dream meant that I was sitting back and missing out on things that the Lord had for me. Um, I had a wonderful conversation with a mentor of mine, Latara Ham Ying, and we uh, talked a little bit about um, my fear. And I know God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But so often I know I limit my own self because I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm too old. I'm afraid I don't look good enough. I'm afraid I'm doing the wrong thing in the Lord. I'm afraid I don't have the right resources. I'm afraid I don't have the right contacts. All of these things. And it's real hard to admit that you are frightened when you know the Lord of Lords and you know the King of the universe um, and you know he's on your side. But the first thing to do to overcome it is to admit it and then rebuke it. So I've had to rebuke the spirit of fear in my life and I've had to begin to seek the Lord diligently to do the things I know he's called me to do regardless of how I feel. Because um, it isn't about how I feel, it's about what I know and what I know is I can do all things through Christ who has given me strength. You know, when we think about our lives, our lives are supposed to be a life of worship, an example of worship. Worship is so much more than coming into the church and lifting your hands and singing for 20 minutes. It's actually supposed to be your life. Your life is supposed to be your worship unto the Lord. And so I was thinking, and I've, I've shared this before in some of the classes that I've taught and um, in my Go What You Got manual, I talk about Amos and how he's called and he doesn't have the pedigree or the resources to do what it is God has called him to do, which is be a prophet to Israel. Um, but when we fail to walk in the will of God, when we fail to go after the things he's called us to, to go after, to achieve, um, to be his hands and his feet in the earth, we fail the earth. Um, we failed the people we're assigned to. We failed the kingdom. And we've got to get beyond ourselves because it's not about us. In um, the book of Amos, in chapter 8, verse 11, it says, The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. And in that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. They who swear by the shame of Samaria or say as surely as, you, as your God lives, O Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall, never to rise again. And I guess the reason why I wanted to share that with you in this worship note is because there's a famine in the land. And when we don't do what we're called to do, when we don't live a lifestyle of worship, when we don't go out and share the ministry that God has placed in our hearts or the dream that God has placed in our hearts, somebody is not hearing a word from the Lord and they're falling never to rise again. 
and I wrote this song um, not too long ago and it was the cry of my heart um, at the moment and I know I use that term a lot I feel like I cry in my heart a lot but um it was about deeper, going deeper, and living in the center of God's will. Because in the center of God's will, fear can't exist, and um, lack can't exist, and shame can't exist, and inability can't exist. Because when you live smack dab in the center of God's will, you can accomplish whatever it is he's called for you to accomplish because you're hearing from him so clearly that you know what it is you're supposed to do. And when you know what it is you're supposed to do, you are living a life of worship. And you're doing it. You can't just know it. You have to know it and you have to do it. And then you're living a life of worship. And the song goes just like this. I'm just going to sing a little bit of it uh, for you. I want to go deeper. Deeper in your heart, I want to go deeper Till I'm hidden in the holy place Deeper Deeper in your heart and I will live In the center of your will Yes, I will live in the center of your will. I want to go deeper, deeper, deeper. I got to get closer, closer, closer. I want to go deeper, deeper, deeper. See your face, see your face and I will live. In the center of your will, yes, I will live in the center of your will. Live in the center of his will today. Let go of those things that hinder you and trust and know to live a life of worship is to do what God has called you to do for such a time as this. Be blessed. This is Naima Johnston Bush.